This is Biography. For March 18th, 2002, Biography with Harry Smith. Ron Howard. He's gone from TV's Boy Next Door to Teen Idol, the top Hollywood director on the eve of his greatest okay, triumph. Action. Ron Howard may need both hands at the Academy Awards Sunday night. His film, A Beautiful Mind, has been nominated for Best Direction and Best Picture. His milk and cookies image hasn't seemed to hurt him in Hollywood, a town where nice guys supposedly finish last. His films have earned more than a billion dollars at the box office. No doubt these are happy days for Ron Howard. I grew up with him. He was in my living room. He was part of my life, you know, as part of the American culture. I was holding up this great big juicy worm. Opie, we're having our breakfast now. And can I tell you about the bugs? No! Happy Monday, happy days. I watched him on Happy Days and had a crush on him. <laughs> We've all had a crush on him. <laughs> Very exciting for me. The girls want to be with me all the time. And I just never experienced that kind of excitement. And he would say, you know, I really want to be a director. What do you think? Action! I thought, what do I think? I think, Ron, if there's anything you want to do, you'll probably just do it, do it great. Pass! Excellent. It was kind of a tough transition going from child actor to adult director. But he really, really handled it well. He has seen everything possible that can happen on a set. Whether he was a six-year-old actor or he was a guy trying to make a Roger Corman film, he's seen every possible thing happen, so he knows what's important. He's not an easygoing guy. Howard, you've done it again. He's calm, but he's not easygoing. He is very competitive. We call him Mr. Howard now. <laughs> By 1950, a new invention was galvanizing the world. Americans quickly embraced the innovative technology which brought live entertainment right into their living rooms. But in Duncan, Oklahoma, newlyweds Rance and Jean Howard had dreams of starting a family and making their mark in the theater. On March 1st, 1954, the couple welcomed a son, Ronald William Howard. And soon after, they headed for New York the epicenter of theatrical opportunity. Within months, Rance landed a role with veteran actor Henry Fonda in the touring company of Mr. Roberts, and Jean appeared off-Broadway in the Passion Play. But in 1955, Rance's career took an unexpected turn when he was cast in a movie, a Western called Frontier Woman. Jean was also hired on the picture, and one-year-old Ronnie Howard made his feature film debut as a babe in his mother's arms. We were so pleased to have him. So pleased to have him. But he was, you know, he didn't live in one world and we lived in the other. He lived in our world with us. The child frequently accompanied his parents to auditions. And when Rance was cast in The Journey, the director, Anatole Litvak, was so charmed by three-year-old Ronnie that he created a whole new character just for him. We were skeptical, but we thought, well, okay, he has an opportunity to do this movie, The Journey. We'll do it, and if it has any negative aspects, we won't do it anymore. But the experience was anything but negative. The film was shot on location in Vienna, Austria, and the Howards were not only working together, they were seeing the world together. By the end of the decade, the television industry was booming, and stage actors flocked to the West Coast to get a break on the small screen. Gene and Rance followed the trend and moved to a small suburb outside of Hollywood, California, called Burbank. When Gene gave birth to a second son, Clint, she decided to stay home and become a full-time mom, while Rance slowly began to find work in television. But with popular shows like Leave it to Beaver and Dennis the Menace dominating the airwaves, a whole new area of the industry had opened up for child actors. Believing that their red-headed, freckled-faced son had potential, 
the Howards decided to find five-year-old Ronnie an agent. In no time, the boy's career took off as he began appearing on television programs such as Johnny Ringo, starring Don Durant. Now, Ricky, I'm going to ask you a very important question now, boy. Who killed your mother? That man. But it was an episode of GE Theater called Barnaby and Mr. O'Malley, starring Bert Lahr, that changed Ronnie's life forever. The morning after the show aired, his agent was bombarded with phone calls, including an offer for a new television series called The Andy Griffith Show. Based on the life of a sheriff in a small town, the show starred Andy Griffith as Sheriff Andy Taylor, Don Knotts as Deputy Barney Fife, Francis Bavier as Aunt B, and Ronnie Howard as Andy's son, Opie. But when rehearsals began in the spring of 1960, the six-year-old hit a stumbling block. He couldn't read. Fortunately, his father, Rance, was on the set every day, and it was a problem they quickly overcame. I would go to the script readings. I would uh, read Opie's lines, and, and, uh, and uh, Ronnie would sit and listen, you know. I would teach him his lines. You ought to see him eat, Pop. Remember when they wouldn't take any food from me at all? I sure do. Well, you should have seen them this morning. They were grabbing for these great big juicy worms. Oh, P, we're having our breakfast now. <laughs> but you should have seen him, ain't eh, I was holding up this great big juicy worm. Oh, P. I believe Aunt B's trying to tell you that worms ain't exactly a good subject for the breakfast table. Oh. And can I tell you about the bugs? No. <laughs> Ronnie displayed not only a seriousness and dedication to the work, but a raw, natural talent. Why, why? Please, why, why? <laughs> he had to cry in a scene. And he was just, uh, oh, about six, I guess years old and he cried and he was still crying after the scene was over and Bob Sweeney was the director he went over and he said how did you how did you arrive at that he said well I had a little dog that died and he thought of that and that brought it on that's <laughs> method acting yeah the Andy Griffith show quickly rose to the number one spot on television and Ronnie Howard became a household name but his newfound celebrity was not a license to misbehave. He was uh, very quiet and uh, well-behaved. He's the most best-behaved child actor I ever worked with, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, and his parents told us right off the reel not to spoil him by giving him a lot of presents and stuff like that. So we honored what they said. While on hiatus in 1961, Ronnie went to work on the big screen in Door to Door Maniac, starring Johnny Cash, and The Music Man, opposite Shirley Jones and Robert Preston. The Music Man was a critical and box office success, and the press raved about the eight-year-old's performance. By 1962, three-year-old Clint was making guest appearances on The Andy Griffith Show as Leon, the silent cowboy and learning the same invaluable lessons his older brother had already mastered. Dad really was our mentor. He made sure that Ron and I were prepared every day. Dad always stressed, your number one job is to go to work being prepared. But now, with both boys working, the Howards grew concerned that they were robbing their sons of normal, carefree childhoods. Dad would ask us every time, do you want to do this? Ron and I always had a choice. Whether, whether we could do a job or not do a job. Given the option, Ronnie chose working. But in order to keep the job, he had to maintain his grades in a full curriculum of classes taught by a studio teacher. But his curiosity in the classroom was easily matched by his curiosity on the set. Crew members patiently answered his copious questions, and it was no surprise to them when the eight-year-old actor announced that what he really wanted to do was direct. For his next birthday, Andy Griffith gave the young star a Super 8 millimeter camera. And soon, Ronnie was making movies about anything and everything, including his weekly household responsibilities. He did have one chore, and that was to mow the grass. He really hated to cut it. 
And one day he came in and he says, uh, Dad, he says, uh, I've got a wonderful idea. I want to do a movie. And Rand says, oh, you do? He said, yes. He said, you put on those fatigues of yours and you will be like a colonel in the army and you're pushing that lawnmower and you're attacking that grass. Amazingly, it took just as long to make the movie as it did to cut the grass. By 1964, the famous 10-year-old was earning more than $100,000 a year. But despite their children's growing wealth, the Howards raised the boys in a modest, middle-class lifestyle. Rance has always supported our family, and we've lived on the money that he's made. A die-hard sports fan, he had often told journalists his first love was baseball. Recognizing that their young star still needed to have a childhood, the producers of The Andy Griffith Show reworked the entire cast and crew's production schedule so that Ronnie would not miss a single Little League game. By 1967, America watched in living color as the adorable tyke matured into a wholesome teen. Say, you know, I was just thinking, we don't have any homework or anything. I'd just like to drop by the record store and pick up a few discs. Okay, great. By now, Ronnie was not the only star in the family. Each week, thousands of fans tuned into the popular series Gentle Ben, starring Clint Howard. I do remember there was a year when the Griffith Show was number one and, and Gentle Ben was number two. And yeah, you know, that made us feel pretty good. And that, see, that was, I was eight and he was 13. And yeah, we, you know, the Howard boys kicking some booty. But in 1968, after eight successful seasons, the Andy Griffith Show shot its final episode. It was a very emotional time for Ronnie, who was unprepared to leave the people who had become his friends and family. For the first time in his life, Ronnie Howard was out of work. But the television star sidestepped the unemployment line and nervously headed for the lunch lines at Burbank's Burroughs High School. A famous face, determined to fit into the crowd. You are watching Ron Howard on Biography. In 1968, Ronnie Howard directed his first Western, Cards, Cads, Guns, Gore, and Death, starring his brother Clint. But there was little call for 14-year-old directors, and the shy student turned his attention toward fitting into his new world, public high school. He decided that he was going to take the year off from acting and really concentrate on basketball. He was up early in the morning shooting baskets and late at night shooting baskets. But at the end of that basketball season, he came to me and he said, I'm not going to get the height. And he said, I don't have the speed. And he says, I think I better go back into show business. But the gangly teenager had difficulty jumping back into work and hit his first professional dry spell. Nevertheless, Howard refused to give up. After school, he went from audition to audition and slowly began landing minor television appearances. <laughs> 